you send somebody an email and they don't respond to you. What do you do? Well, I want to, I want to back up first and foremost and to go, okay, let's think about this strategically. What did you put in your subject line? How did you word the email? What did you do in the first place? And on some occasions, by the way, it might be a social media message. So it depends on just whatever you think is appropriate. So the first thing that you want to think about with the subject line, I'm going to cover three points with the email follow-up. The first one is the subject line. Now, if you're following up a conversation, meeting somebody at an event, I would really suggest doing one of two things and maybe even both. Um, it's citing that, that you're following up after a very specific event. So they'll know that you're getting in touch in relation to that thing. So that already gives a personal connection because you've both been at the same event. The second one as well, the second thing to consider putting in the subject line is actually picking up on a very specific conversation that you've had with that person. So thinking about when I was saying that you can always call on your own resources, call on your own areas of specialism, that you can always say following, let's say I'm in New York, the Affordable Art Fair is about to happen, so I can say following AAF NYC dash, and then Brooklyn Framer as mentioned. I've just made that up. But it might be that I have met a gallery, they're looking for a new framer, and I think, oh, I know a fantastic one, and I do, um, in Brooklyn. So I can give that recommendation for them. That's much more likely to get an open. It is citing an event. It's citing something that we've actually discussed in a conversation, which is a memory jog. And in that case, I'm actually helping them as well. So my gosh, they're very likely to respond and to say, thank you so much. And if they don't, immediately then, I can think, okay, they're probably busy. They've just come out of an art fair. The very first thing to do is for them is to be following up their client leads, which is completely understandable. And I'll come back in a moment. It's point number three on what to do if they don't come back to you. So the second point after considering the email subject line is, is then to, to really be considered about what you include in the email body itself. Now, again, this is going to include say a social media um, direct message if that's how you're following up. So in a message, you'll want to be thinking about um, personally addressing the person, of course. Uh, you want to be prompting an action, ideally. So that might be going to an event together. It could be having a meeting. It could be, if it's an email, it might be connecting on a social media platform. One of the most important things about digital marketing and digital communicating is prompting actions on the part of others. And within, if it's an email message, then making certain that your social media handles with, with embedded included links on the handles, on the text, that those are there, prompt people to take action and connect with you, prompt them to sign up to your mailing list, for example, and also to make certain that things like your website are linked and readily available. And if you do have an upcoming event, that's a really great way to, to also follow up people after meeting them. I know for a lot of people who are time poor, you may not be able to go and have lots of coffees with people. I know these days in my world, somebody will say, oh, particularly this is junior people in there, as in people who are early stage career. They'll say, oh, Susan, that's great. Let's have a coffee. And I'm like, fantastic. I have no time. So come, and I don't say that. I say, fantastic. Come to this event where I'll be located. And that's a way that I can continue conversations in a way that's realistic for my own capacity. So, so you learn how to, how to handle things, but for the, for the action that you're prompting in the follow-up, what is that going to be? And is it, what kind of action is suitable? Now, when it came to that interior designer, in that case, it was completely appropriate that she and I had a one-to-one -one meeting. My goodness, that was what we needed to do. Um, if it had perhaps been somebody who, let's say it was an artist who might be interested in supplying my gallery potential commission pieces, um, I probably wouldn't have had that one-to-one -one sit down. I probably would have said, hey, I'm gonna be going to this exhibition. So how about coming with me and we'll continue the conversation there. So sometimes you can think, even think when you're going to an event anyway, it's a nice time to, to carry on those dialogues. Now the third point within the follow-up is coming back to what do you do when you've sent somebody a message and they have not responded. Um, follow them up. People are busy. 
you know, and particularly to do with email, people just don't see emails these days. And sometimes emails end up going into junk boxes as well. There is one artist that I'm supporting very closely at the moment. I'm doing an hour and a half a week um, with her. Somebody else in the Be Smart About Art team is doing three hours a week support digital marketing wise. And for whatever reason, the emails end up in my junk box, the junk box. I do not know why. So, so sometimes you just need to pick up the phone and call somebody. You need to text them, maybe get up and touch them on social media, um, all kinds of things. But what you want to bear in mind with this is just that people are busy. So how do you go about sending a follow-up reminder? Take your original email, forward it to them. And don't say, did you see the email? It's kind of not a very nice thing to say. That's also a, a rule with journalists to never say, did you see my press release? Of course they probably did. So you say instead, hey, um, I, know you're, I know you're busy, so I'm just checking in on, on this email, hope you're well, and take care, da da da, your name. Nine times out of 10, not based on stats, but based on experience and observation, that works when you send a forward. And I've learned just a neat little tip when it comes to normal one-to-one -one email exchanges is use that subject line. Today, what I do when somebody emails me and I email them back with some, I've taken an action, and instead of it starting out with RE and it's got the, the ongoing thread title, the subject line, I add in front of that, and I learned this from a journalist, I put in front of that what's in that email so they can see how it's developing it. And I update the subject line each and every time. So when we talk about building relationships and having ongoing dialogues, having a good foundation, getting to know people at the time, carrying that through to doing projects, using technologies in smart ways like that is really fantastic. 